Let's turn to exploring the Shema discussions on the issues of Trinity. We're in paper three of three. Who or what is the Holy Spirit? I made some changes to the commentary this week, just um, made some kind of organizational changes, some uh, structural changes. I've added a little bit more content, um, make the the, struc- the uh, uh, study a bit more um, easy to understand. So let me just sh- show you some of the changes. First change you're going to notice if you printed this out before this week um, is that I added numbers to the um paragraph points. And so now all those paragraph points that I mentioned, uh, which I added one, um, they've got numbers to them to make it easier to follow along. So let me just read through those real quick. Uh, Number one, introduction, my bluff, my bottom line up front. That's where we're at tonight. We're in the second half of the introduction, and we'll finish that tonight. Number two... Uh, that we're going to be studying. This is a new new uh, topic that I added that I wrote this week. Who or what is the Holy Spirit? Spirit of God versus Spirit of Christ versus the Holy Spirit. I added that over over the, this week. Added that section um, and developed it a little more um, extensively. So we'll look at these uh, designators that the Bible uses and um, try to ascertain. Oh, uh, what the Bible's trying to teach us. Uh, the third section, number three, who or what is the Holy Spirit? Who or what spirit is indwelling believers? This is going to dovetail off the uh, point number two about Spirit of God, Spirit of Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Number four, uh, who or what is the Holy Spirit? The Filioque debate, Eastern Orthodoxy, the Latter-day Saints, and social Trinitarian thoughts. This um, section was also reworked from the last time that you probably saw it last week um, to include, I rewrote and and added a section on the filioque. Uh, The filioque is a um, term that's referring to um, uh, an extra clause in the Western Church's creedal formulation about from whom does the Holy Spirit proceed? What's its point? Of, what is his point of origin? Does he proceed from the Father, or does he proceed from the Father and the Son? And how the Church of the East and the Church of the West uh, debated this particular discussion, and it is relevant for our um, Holy Spirit topic. And then we talk about Eastern Orthodoxy, Latter Day Saints, and Social Trinitarian. So that's section four. Section 5 that I uh, uh, updated a little bit as well, added some more information. Rabbinic Jewish Thoughts from the Jewish Encyclopedia. Um, that will be uh, interesting when we get to it. Uh, we're obviously not going to get to it tonight. That'll be months from now. Uh, section number 6, Who or What is the Holy Spirit? Unitarian Thoughts versus Classical Trinitarian Thoughts. I added some more information there to clarify another quote from a classic uh, Trinitarian source um, and things like that. And then the last two sections that I uh, I don't think I added anything to section number 7. Who or what is the Holy Spirit? Revisiting the Holy Spirit passages from paper 2. I didn't add anything there. I didn't change anything. And then section 8, excursus, ruach within versus ruach upon. That is a, a kind of a digression discussion about was the Holy Spirit on people in the Old Testament versus being in people in the New Testament, how do we factor in the language that shows up in the Bible? How are we to understand the the Holy Spirit's role uh, within the the body of Messiah, both then and now? All right, so having said that, let's jump into the section one, introduction, my bluff, which stands for bottom line up front, B-L-U-F, the bottom line up front, my bluff. And we already read through this section last week. Go back and listen to study number, episode number 153. And we stopped where we talked about um, this idea about this last paragraph here, about the idea that um, when we're doing our scientific research, it's very important to factor in and bring in other opinions um, opinions from other rabbis, pastors, clergy members, uh, seminarians, people in particular fields of study uh, like uh, who know the original languages or uh, historians or things like that. These are all important opinions, but at the end of the day, the final authority on any particular topic is always going to be the Word of God. So this is just the balanced perspective that we need to um, carry as we're studying the Bible. It's my recommended uh, uh, approach as you're studying the Bible. It's not wrong to resort to commentaries, but at the end of the day, make sure that it's the Bible that has the most amount of weight.